All right, good afternoon, Year 7. Uh, this is um, how to number 4, and we're going to be looking at painting our model and trying to create a more realistic landscape. And as we do it, we might be able to talk about some of the features of dams and why they are where they are. So I'm just going to move the camera so you can see the model and some of the bits and pieces that I've got today while we talk about the preparation we need to do. Right, so here's the model. Let's see if I can move this a little bit and see. So there we are. Um, you can see here's the, the dam itself. Here's the valley. This is where the water is going to sit. Um, and that's going to be the object of um, how to number five um, in researching and, and creating a water-like appearance. Here are the, the high hillsides above the reservoir and the dam. And in fact, if we have a look here, you can see this is where the river would end up going uh, as it comes out of the release by the dam and further down the valley. Um, you can see that the model now is nice and dry, um, so it'd be easier to paint. And some of the things that you need, I've uh, got um, some of these are paints from B&Q. They just test the pots. Um, they're rather expensive, but it was the only option I had. I didn't have any other paints. Um, if you've got something like this, a good idea is just to give it a good shake um, before you use it. All right. Now, along with that, you'll need a couple of paint brushes. I've also got myself an old sponge. I'm gonna, I might sponge some of the paint on um, and see what the effect looks like. Um, you'll need some water as well, obviously, to keep your paint brushes clean, um, etc. So let's just pause there for a moment. Um, right, here we go. So I've got some, myself some old paint brushes here. Um, These are two. Um, they just picked up some colour from um, some painting I did a little while ago, but they are fine. Um, and you may notice I've got some uh, rocks around here just to keep everything um, in place. It's a bit breezy. Um, you may want to have yourself. Um, somewhere to work on. Um, I've put some newspaper down as well so that if there's any spillage or anything um, I can just um, throw the paper in the bin and it doesn't create any problems. Okay, right. So the first paint I'm going to use is um, a grey. Um, and looking at the two I've got, um, this looks to be the lighter grey. So I'm going to um, paint the tops of the hillsides as if it's rock and the idea is is that the darker grey that I've got um, I will paint in the, on the steeper slopes in the shadows um, to give our landscape a more um, realistic look we'll see how we get on um, now these pots have come with um, a brush um, I'm not sure how good it is um, and what I might do is just dip it in water first, um, make the paint a bit more runny. So what I'm going to do now is just start um, painting around the top of my model um, like this, all the upper slopes. And really, dams are often created in or built in mountainous areas because there are two things that you need for a dam in such places. One is that mountains tend to have high rainfall and of course what you do need is a plentiful supply. So very often they will be in the upper mountain ranges. The other thing that you have is that you have deep valleys and that allows you to build a concrete dam across the valley and store water um, in the reservoir and what you're looking for in such a such a valley is where the valley sides come together um, like a pinch point and what this will give you is um, a gap between the two valley sides where it's easier to build the concrete skirt, the concrete dam itself. You don't want to have a wide gap 
to build across. So I think that's the top of my, you can see some of this paper has come undone, but there we are. So there we are. So I hope that you can see what I've done is there. I've just done the, right, and I'm just going to paint down here as well. Now it may be that I have to come out and actually do it, um, a second coat, but we'll deal with that as and when it's needed. So there we are, I've got I've got my upper mountain rock painted. I will probably use, also use this grey for the dam itself. So here's the second grey, um, it's a darker grey and this I want to use, as I said, on the bits that are likely to be in shadow um, so that we create a more realistic appearance. We'll see how it goes. Now certainly if I can turn my model here, here we've got some steep slopes here so in fact I'm going to paint this. Uh, this darker grey. Um, now what you may do of course is you may use a black. You could just add black to your first grey and make that darker. I don't have any um, black. In fact I don't have any blue so I'm going to have to try and find for um, obviously when we do the water. That's that side. There's and here I'm going to put some um, I'm going to put some darker grey here. I'm not really worried about going over uh, the other paint because it will blend in. Uh, make sure it's not too thick. So what I might do is just get a dab of water. But here we go. And the idea is, is just to create areas where obviously you'd have a darker grey perhaps in the shadows. And so I'm just going to add a bit of water here. And so what I'm going to do just go around and put my darker grey where I think um, it's likely to be. Um, so what I'll do is I'll pause the video while I just continue with that. You don't want to see me painting all this time. Um, and we'll come back uh, to see what the model looks like in a little while. Now here we've got uh, some sort of little valleys, uh, sort of craggy rock face up here. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of this darker at the top here. That's it. And then, if I get some water and just put the water on top, what will happen is it will, the water will dilute the paint and then it will begin to run down. There we go. And it will just run down and take the paint. Down. There we are, there's some, I could do some up here as well, there we are. Um, and so you can do that, it's just, here we are, we may find that we want to put a little up here. Okay, and then all I'll do is get a little bit of water, and if I just dilute this, there we are, and it begins to flow down, and it will pick out a sort of natural valley in which to follow. Um, so that's just one way here. There we are, so we've done that. And I think I will probably leave it at about that. I've got some more up here which I'll do, so just here. There's some very, there's quite a steep bit here. You can see with a fold of the paper, so it creates quite a natural landscape. And now what we'll do again, I'll get a little bit of water, and I will again just drop the water on. And eventually the paint will get enough there it goes and it will find its own way down there we are in amongst the cracks and so there we are um, and we'll see how we get on with that right my next colors are sort of ready brown they've called it pimlico but i'm hoping that it will duplicate some of the browns and oranges you see um, up in a hill, some heather, um, bracken, etc. When perhaps it's past the summer, um, you get these ready brown carpets, which 
um, clothe the, the slopes of the, the flanks of the reservoir. So I'll give it a good shake. Make sure you've got the lid firmly on when you do that. You don't want any disasters happening. Um, I also thought I've got this old sponge. I don't go. Here we are. It's a, um, a kitchen sponge, but it's an old one. So don't go and grab your mum's or dad's or guardian's sponge from the kitchen unless you've asked. So I thought I might just sponge it on and see how we get on. Um, so here, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, so you can see, uh, I might just paint this on here um, like this. Okay, and I'm just, let's put, I've got plenty of paint so I can actually, there we are, I'm just going to now uh, paint it on these lower flanks. There we are, blend it in. Uh, and I'm going to do this side as well. Um, I'm not sure about the colour, um, but then I can always go down and get a different colour and go over it if I need to. We'll see what it looks like um, right at the end. So here we are, let's put some more on. And then I'm just going to go down by the dam here. Now, obviously, when you look at a landscape, it's never all one colour. So I've got another a darker ready brown as well, um, which I'm going to try. And we'll go over that, see if we can make it a bit more realistic. There we are. And then I'm just going to put a little bit over the greys. Um, and sometimes, of course, we can have... There we are. And just What's good about this, it sometimes picks out the sort of the ridges, etc. And you just lightly go over and you can see it gives a bit more... Um, interest to the upper slopes because you'd always find odd bits of plants up there on the upper slopes so there we are there's that so I'm going to pause again all right so there that's, that's it so far not convinced about this this ready brown color I must admit but we can always go over it and the important thing is is that when you're when you're sort of painting a landscape it is just to practice just have a go um, see what works because in the end if it doesn't if it's not good you can always paint over it so here we are giving it a good shake um, once again I'm going to use my sponge I think um, so let's just paint the sponge and I'm going to go over the first colour that first sort of brick red colour or brick orange really and then give it a bit of variety so here we go so if I can now Let's just do this here. I'm now going to go and I'm just going to go over it to create a bit of variety into my landscape. What I do need and what I haven't got is probably a green. There we are, that's just, I've just done some there. Okay, don't forget that this area, of course, um, that I'm leaving blank, that's where the reservoir is going to be. So um, let's just, that well, doesn't really matter. Um, I might have some going here. There we go. Some up there. Well, there we are, and I hope I'm beginning to sort of mimic the colours of the landscape that you'd see on the fells um, and the mountainsides above a dam. So this is where my reservoir is going to be. This bit down here, I'm going to find some different colours, I think. I'm going to try and see if I can get a green. And then um, what we'll do is I will put a bit more colour in down here. So I'll finish that in my own. Well, not really. I'll go that in my own time. But there we are. Um, so there we are. I've just used four colours to try and create a landscape. The grey I'm going to use to paint my dam. Um, and my last job is really to to find out about how I'm going to show the water. Now, some initial ideas is I might use aluminium foil and paint it blue to see what uh, that looks like. Um, but it's just a matter of, I think I'll probably go on YouTube and have a look, see what other people do. Um, I don't want to buy anything that looks like um, 
uh, it looks like water. I think I'm going to try for an effect. Um, but anyway, so there, there it is so far. Um, anyway, have fun if you're painting your model. Have fun. Try it out. See how you get on. Um, and then the last one will be um, video number five, where we'll talk about right, the actual water in the reservoir. And I'll also probably have finished off um, this painting um, there. And in this painting down here, because I might have to go and get a green from somewhere, because um, I think that's what's missing at the moment. Right. Okay. Good uh, fun. And I'll see you next time.